So let's talk about the pros and cons between the different types of entities, the corporations, the LLCs, the sole proprietorship. The sole proprietorship is the easiest. Absolutely. It's the riskiest. Absolutely. The next easiest entity is a single member LLC. Form your entity. Uh, treat it appropriately. It has a separate bank account. When you do business in the name of the entity, you, you use the name of the entity. You, you don't treat it as, you don't treat its assets as your own. But for tax purposes, you don't have to file a separate return for that entity every year. It goes on the Schedule C, like the sole proprietorship. The next easiest entity to maintain, in my view, is the limited liability company. You have to file returns for the limited liability company every year. And, and you only do that if you have two or more members. All right. But you get the liability shield. Uh, you have to file returns for that entity every year. But limited liability companies are very flexible entities. You can run them in many different ways. You can distribute money in many different ways. You have to have uh, an agreement with your partner or partners about how you're going to distribute the money, but you can basically do whatever you want in a limited liability company. The complexity really arises in the additional return every year and deciding how you want to run the company and how you want to split up the money. In, in my view, then, the, the next easiest entity is the S Corporation. And it's easy in that people kind of instinctively understand how it works because it's been around so long. You know, you've got a board of directors, you've got employees, you've got salaries, you've got dividends. It is run a certain way, it is managed a certain way, money is distributed a certain way. But there are tax rules about maintaining your S status, which can trip people up. And again, if you have an S corporation, you have to file a return every year, even if there's just one shareholder. So that's different from the single member LLC. It gives you the liability shield, but it's a little more complicated. You're filing a tax return for the S corporation and you'll be filing your individual income tax return. Yes. Then there's the C corp. For a small business, it's usually inappropriate. You can switch from an S to a C when, if you need to at a later time. As companies get bigger, if, if you're going to have thousands of shareholders, you have to be a C. S corporations are tailored for a small number of shareholders. But let's talk about naming the corporation first. You need to check with your Secretary of State in whatever state you're going to do business in. I think you need to check with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to make sure that there isn't something out there just like your, using your name for your business. I think you need to get on the internet and just see what you can find because you're going to need a domain name and hopefully that domain name is going to have something to do with the name of your business. There are people who, who at the beginning want to think about branding, trademarking, and if, if, you're, if you're thinking that forward, you do want to look carefully at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office website. It's very user-friendly. Anybody can do a search there. I can do a search there. You can do a search there. Um, and it will give you an idea of what is out there. And if there's something very similar to what you're thinking about doing, you might not want to use that. And also, what you want to think about with respect to trademarks, and probably with respect to marketing, is how unique of a name you're going to pick. Well, if you're going to name your paper copying company paper copying company, it's pretty generic. On the other hand, if you decide to name your company Xerox, it's not generic and you might have a really good chance of building a brand. <laughs>